Right, folks. Welcome to this exciting video where you once again join me in the wild landscape of Scotland. And today we've come somewhere special. We've come beside Edsel to the Blue Door, which is a popular walking spot in Scotland. And the landscape around here is just absolutely incredible. We've got the River Esk to our left here. I believe it's the North Esk. And yeah, I'm just way to head down this path. This is an amazing piece of land because not only is there incredible rock formations where the river flows through, but also there's some cool abandoned history along the way. So what better place for an adventure, folks? Look at this, wow! I can actually see stonework down by the river and I believe that may be some of the remains from an old water wheel shed that used to be here, with an old water wheel which I did document in depth a couple of years ago. Wow! Yeah, here it is, folks. This piece of land. There used to be an old water wheel here with a full shed, and I climbed up to it, and now the whole embankment's gone. So let's go and see if we can actually get down there and have a proper look. It's crazy how the history can just get wiped out in a storm if the river's that high. And one of the storms earlier this year, the river was the highest it's been for years, maybe 50 years or whatever. And yeah, that must have been when this got wiped out. Look at this, folks. This is cool because the steps here are actually cut into the bedrock. And this area here is actually popular for fishing. I think some of these paths were actually put in for fishing back in the day. Wow, this is amazing. The water's proper brown with the peaty water which gets washed off the hilltop bogs around these glens. And the river is super low just now as well. Sometimes people can get caught out and stranded down here because the river can rise so quick if there's big storms further up the glen. Wow, yeah, look, the whole front wall of this old water wheel shed is now gone. I can't even believe that. It just shows how much history could change within a couple of years. And this here is the Ganachy Bridge, built with sandstone onto the sandstone bedrock. Wow, I'm just thinking if I'm able to climb back up to this again, it'll be a mad little free climb up this cliff. The conditions are a little wet. Yes, that was the key foothold that I got there. The conditions have been wet, but still, this may be possible. Let's document this history, folks. And here we are. Look at the lintel stone here from the door. I can't even believe it. Last time I was here, I went inside this little shed and it was still in decent condition. Look at it now. It just shows how nature can often take back the sun that you can't control, and that is nature itself. When the flow of the water's coming down, you can see the steel part of the, the water pump, water wheel system here is still in all right condition, but probably if that wall at the end had gone, this whole thing would have gone tumbling down the hill. You can see this bit here, and that's where the water used to flow in from a higher source in the river, and it would come down into these paddles and then turn this great wheel, and then obviously this cam mechanism would pump this water pump here, which must have been used for pumping water at a certain time. Maybe to a nearby big house or a location in this area, maybe a farm or whatever even. I'm just noticing there's, there's some older cut stones here which has been placed in the wall originally. And yeah, it's just built right onto the bedrock. How cool is it that this piece of history is still here to be documented on this video? I didn't even think I was going to be able to climb up. I'm sure last time I came up here it was a mad storm and I was proper slipping all over the place. And then what a view down towards the bridge. Yeah, insane scenes on the channel once again. We always promise you the coolest adventures on this channel, folks. Now I need to safely climb my way down here. There is a few ledges and that's what I'm using to my advantage here. I'm going to try and get the same foothold I had when I came up. Now I'm just going to jump down to this area. All that training on the rocks down at the coast sets us up for these adventures. 
So yeah, wow, look at this for a scene, folks. I often say we're standing in a Scottish postcard, and this is one of these occasions. To have this history here, and then the old bridge. The way the landscape looks so wild, with the bedrock cliffs at each side, carved from the wild river. And it just shows the height that the river was in the storm. The river was proper really high this this past year, and it's mad to see the outcome of that. And the character of that is so amazing as well. Now it can be seen from this height. Yeah, these little steps are carved into the bedrock the whole way down here. Then there's actually little mad rock pools. I can also see utter devastation further up the river. It'll be some of those trees that's fallen as the soil and earth got washed out below them. Anyway, let's head on to the next cool location on this video. I think there's an old, what what used to be like a footbridge over the river, and there's some cool interesting big pillars and stuff. And there's some other mad areas of rock up here. So let's head on and see what we see. Look at the stair weaving its way up this hill. So here we are a wee bit further up this river now, up this river path. And look at this little waterfall which is at the edge. You can't kind of beat the sound of that folks, a little waterfall, a little stream trickling past, making its way into the wild waters of the River Esk. Check it out here folks, all the way along the side of the path, you get these mad cliffs which are like 50 foot you're probably 50 foot up when you're at this height and it's just sheer drops and you always have to be paying attention because you could literally step over the edge and it's straight down but that often adds to the character of a place like this it's wild, unforgiving and you can still see remains of some of the trees that was blown down at the time of the bad storm Check out here folks, I'm not as far up as the bridge yet, but I've come to this almost fairy tale like balcony in the next to the river in the forest here and it's mad the wee cliffs and the way they've got all these steps coming down. There's been a big tree there which must have fallen down this path, but I think they keep it clear for the fishermen. Yeah look, the water's just pure dark and black down into the depths. Super deep, super dangerous undercurrents at this river as well. Yeah, I just thought I would throw the camera on and show you this mad spot. We're almost as far up as the bridge. But look how the, the way these have all been laid, these steps are cut. This is it, folks. We've made it as far along as the bridge, and there's this mad, like, outcrop of rocks that we're going to take a look at. The way the river flows here, it's totally unique. And that's what makes this area so special for a wee adventure or a wee walk. Look how the bridge pillar here is on the stones. It's just beautiful to see. And then the way the river's carved all this, you can see how these pebbles are within the sandstone bedrock in this area. And that's what gives it this look. Wow, it's just massive cliffs at each side. I can actually see there's people chilling up here. I'm not sure if they're fishing. I saw one fisherman further down there with all his gear. Shout out if you're watching this video and you do a bit of fishing around here. Yeah, the river's super low just now, judging from what I'm seeing. Look at the shape of these rocks, the way it carves up. There's a proper waterfall at that side. That's where the other gentlemen are sitting down at the other side of there, so I better not go and intrude on them, but we'll take a walk past this pillar, because I want to document the history on the channel. It's probably like three or four years since I've even been down here, and it is so cool. I can't believe how deep the water looks though, because you can see the stone just kind of disappearing into the darkness. It would be super scary if you went in there. Yeah, the shape of this, it's so unique and so incredible. Wow, I just hope the atmosphere in a place like this comes out on the camera. It's almost like being in a jungle. And I love the detail on this old bridge. It's not just plain metal work. It's been proper detailed iron work at the center. And that's got a character of its own. I need to pick a proper route up here or I could slip into the river. Wow, you hear the roar from the waterfall. And here it is, the old pillar. 
you can see what I mean, it's been like one of those suspension bridges almost held up for the metal rods, similar to the one we saw at Glen Isla on a previous adventure. But I love the way they've built this onto the bedrock, into this crazy landscape that we're standing within. Absolute madness. That's That's been abandoned for as long as I've known it. It's been one of those ancient structures. And let's head up and take a look at this end. This must have had a little gate or whatever on it. Yeah, look at this pillar, folks. History hidden within wild lands. And that's what I always promise you on this channel. The coolest places and the maddest wee historical nuggets. Like this pillar here, even. It's just mad the way they've shaped it. The way they've built it. They don't build stuff like that anymore. Most things is plain and boring. And they wouldn't spend such a long, like such a long time building something which was just for a simple walkway. Almost a path of leisure. So look at this folks, you can see the ancient ironwork here. At one time supporting the bridge. And then at one time this is where you would have walked along. Probably wooden boards or whatever on it originally back in the day. Look, you can kind of see it. Somebody's hung on an old romantic padlock on there. Look at that, though, the way they've shaped it. It's probably all made for a local blacksmith back at that time. Unlike modern things, which is made often in bulk and made for quantity rather than quality. A lot of the stuff back at this time was handmade, individually made. Look at the curvy shape there, folks. That sort of historical detail is almost forgotten. And that's also similar to the cool detail that we saw in the middle. Amazing. Anyway, let's head on with this adventure. So in that river there, folks, you do actually get Atlantic salmon. And often, certain times of year, you actually see the salmon jumping as they go back upstream. And then over at this side, through the trees, it probably doesn't come out too well on the camera, but there's actually a big mansion house. And I believe that's called Burn House. And that wee bridge we saw would have been in position when this old grand mansion was in its prime. But yeah, it's beautiful to see that. It's got some like plants and ivy kind of stuff growing up the walls and it gives it such a character. But an interesting detail, that water wheel water pump that we saw at the start of the video, somebody actually told me one time that there was a chance it may have been in position in World War II, there was cows kept in the walled garden of the Burn House mansion. And somebody in my comments once theorised that that may have been a water pump for giving the cows a drink for their trough or whatever. But that is just obviously a theory. We do love to share that history though of the war time. And it is cool, the fact that the cows were kept up at the, the Burn Mansion at that time is a cool historical detail I've learnt just through making these videos. Often with these old Scottish estates there was often like paths internally on them similar to the one I'm on today. We've seen other similar paths at like Early Estate and places like that. When we walked down the side of Reiki Lynn waterfall those were all old paths which at one time would have been kept by the estate workers, the gardeners or the foresters. And the reason these paths were in position was often for the estate, like Laird and Lady of the estate, they would often go for walks and they would have little follies at various positions over the land. These paths were often where they walked. So yeah, they were always well kept. Because I walked up the edge of the river on the way here, I'm actually taking a secondary route and it kind of takes me around the side of the mansion house garden area. Wow, it's just a mad landscape we're in once again, and it's summertime conditions. I've put the hoodie on, but in hindsight, it's too hot now. You never know how the weather's going to be this year. It's often raining one minute and then super humid conditions the next. But at the weekend, I couldn't really go out exploring properly because it was rainy and windy. So today, I'm out and out for action, folks. Some of these beech trees are so big. They were most likely planted when that house was first built, or that house was in its prime. It's crazy the size of some of these. Unfortunately, some of the big beech trees was the ones that got blown down in the storm. But there is plenty of them still here, standing strong. Anyway folks, I'm just about back down to the end of this path. 
It's been an interesting wee video coming back to this location. First time probably in like three or four years I reckon since I've explored it and it's cool to see the wee historical nuggets. It is mad how much that water wheel house has changed in that short period of time. That goes to show the reason why it's worth videoing it and it's worth having these adventures. It documents the history as it was at that time. If they do get wiped out forever you can see how it was. Anyway, I'm ending this one here. Thanks very much for watching and we'll be back soon with the next adventure, wherever I end up going.